Today was OpenAI's most important day of the year, and the internet as we know it is over. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. Open more scientific progress. Anyone, pretty soon, will be able to do more than anyone in history could. That is a really big deal. 800 million people now use ChatGBT. It is the fastest growing consumer app in history. It took Google nearly eight years to reach this number, but ChatGBT did it in under two. And what they announced today is going to change how you use the internet every single day. They launch features that don't just upgrade the web, but they're completely reinventing it. So here's what's going going on, how it will impact your life, and a look at OpenAI's master plan. So far, there's been two times in history where the internet has completely changed. The first was in 1993 when the World Wide Web went mainstream. Suddenly, anyone could go online, type into a blank bar, and explore the world from their living room. The browser became our window into everything online, paving the way for Google and Amazon and YouTube. And then the second reinvention of the internet came in 2007 when Apple launched the iPhone. The web shrank into our pockets. Apps were invented. The internet became mobile, personal, and always with us. We're no longer tethered to our family computer in the living room to get information. And now we've entered the third reinvention, the chat era. The blank bar isn't Google anymore, it's ChatGBT. Their brand new browser atlas can open up links or talk to you directly in chat. And a key difference here is that with all of the new features that OpenAI came out with, ChatGBT doesn't just answer things and now acts like a teammate. I use ChatGPT every day to maximize what I'm able to get done. It is a public speaking coach for me, a fitness instructor, a sous chef, an assistant, and a teacher. ChatGPT can search, analyze, book, and create, not because we read it every step, but because it understands what we want. Apps are now built directly into ChatGPT. So for example, instead of opening Spotify, you can now write directly into the chat, create a playlist for me based on everything that you know about. And once ChatGPT and Spotify are connected, it will look through your memory of your chat history and create a custom playlist for you. You can do the same thing with booking.com to book a vacation or Figma to create designs, all inside one chat window. For example, Figma turn the sketch into a workable diagram. And what makes this new interface so powerful is what's actually happening underneath it. The moment AI stops waiting for instructions and starts taking initiative. This new version of the internet marks a turning point from humans using tools to the tools that we're creating using tools to help us. OpenAI also launched Pulse. Pulse is a daily summary that figures out what matters most to you and then surfaces it every day. Whether it be new news stories, reminders, tasks, ideas, things that you forgot about that you needed, or making inferences. For example, I have a terrible ear infection right now from all of the flights for these videos, and so I'm on an antibiotic. I told ChatGPT that, and then the next day, it surfaced a story for me about how to protect my gut microbiome because I'm on an antibiotic. And this is level one. This is like the worst it's ever gonna be. It's gonna get better and better at figuring out what you care about and then surfacing information that's relevant to it. Right now, mine's also been surfacing countless optimistic tech stories about nuclear energy, who and robots, and health tech. And every day as a user, you can also fine tune what it shows by leaving likes and also chatting directly with the interface. I think a really important note here is that the quality of an LLM really matters. Like having a best in class LLM is very important. But another reason why users will stay with a certain LLM over another, like picking ChatGPT over Google Gemini, is the relationship that you have with that LLM. With the introduction of memory and the fact that it can reference old chats, every time you use it, it actually gets more and more valuable. It's like strengthening a relationship. It's like when you hang out with a friend or a boyfriend or girlfriend more and more, you get closer and closer and the person just understands you better. Something very similar is now happening with large language models. And I think this is going to be a major edge that keeps consumers in one ecosystem. And it's why chat is at the center of OpenAI's master plan. Open AI also launched something called Agent Builder, which lets anyone create a custom AI that can handle repetitive work like customer support, coding, or creative tasks. And that's going to enable OpenAI to create a marketplace for intelligent workers. Like imagine building an agent that can scan your inbox for opportunities, schedule your week, and pre-program your workouts from your fitness goals. Every big breakthrough that we've talked about so far started because of curiosity. OpenAI technologists asking, what if? Curiosity is magical. And I know if you watch this channel, you're very curious actually my favorite thing about you, and it's why I think you'll like 1440. In a world of limitless information, but limited understanding, 1440 delivers fact-checked, human-curated knowledge every single day, meaning that they pick the best stories to help you stay informed and inspired. I deeply believe that intelligence isn't just a trait that you're born with or not born with, but rather a muscle that you strengthen every single day when you learn new things. The more you engage and learn, the smarter you become, and 1440 makes that muscle easier to grow. With quick overviews of the biggest stories, plus a dedicated science and technology section that covers everything from solar panels and black holes to CRISPR, quantum computing, and AI. The site is beautifully designed and it's become a fundamental part of my media diet. So if you're curious, I'm gonna link it below if you wanna check it out. Such a privilege to get to work with them. And now back to the episode. What's next is controversial and it's become one of the biggest debates online. Keep your hands on the wheel. 
everybody told these two. Sora 2, one of the most impressive text-to-video models we have ever seen. I'm a hardcore tech optimist, but I deeply believe in informed optimism, meaning that you understand everything that can go wrong, and yet you're still optimistic about the future because you see the path in which it can go right. And I think that AI video is the biggest area where we really need to be informed optimists. This tool will help filmmakers visualize ideas that we could never capture before, but it's also likely to flood the internet with fake content. The future of creativity is hanging in the balance here, and it's going to be deeply shaped by how we use it and how responsible the companies are that are rolling it out. So I'm gonna pay very close attention to this one, but I think it's going to become a huge part of OpenAI's strategy because in the same way that Pulse looks at your chat history to figure out what's interesting and engaging to you, OpenAI could potentially have Sora look at your chat history to see what's engaging and interesting to you, assuming that you opt in, and then create custom content for you. We could enter a time period of custom AI generated video. And that future feels much closer to me than most people realize given how quickly we went from terrible AI generated images to amazing AI generated images. I think the same exact thing is gonna happen with video here. OpenAI is now also adding shopping and product recommendations directly into chat, which could end up being a business model for them, very similar to how Google did this with search. And underneath all of this, OpenAI is building both the compute and energy needed to power it. They're signing partnerships with NVIDIA for compute. OpenAI is likely going to be the next multi-trillion dollar hyperscale company. Scaling up massive new data centers that require the same energy capacity as all of New York. And then they're also investing into the energy grid and nuclear power plants to keep it all running. I see energy everywhere. And on a hardware front, they've brought in Apple's design mastermind, Johnny Ive, to figure out what the next version of hardware looks like in the age of AI. All these projects converge into the new foundation that the next generation of the internet will be built on. This technology is already changing my life every single day. I use it all the time. I love learning new things and tools like Study and Learn have completely changed my life. I was learning about nuclear fission last night and then a moment later learning about how to color grade in Final Cut Pro. I think the ability to access and train ChatGPT to be like the smartest professor in the world is genuinely very profound. And in a world where a lot of technology coverage is very doomsday, oh my God, this is going to end the world. I think there's a lot of reason to be hopeful. I feel so lucky to be alive in a time when this technology is revolutionizing and coming into the forefront. And if you're watching this video, I feel like you're very lucky to be alive in this time too. Now there are other companies that are also racing. Google's a great example of one and their master plan is slightly different than OpenAI's and it includes self-driving cars. So if you're interested in learning more, you can click that video right here. And thank you so much for watching this one. I appreciate you.